Hi guys and welcome back to Windeby. This is the third episode of our City Skyline series in which we are going to build a realistic northern and central European town. And today I've got three different projects for you. First, we will connect the city with the main highway by placing two roundabouts. Second, we will start working on the channel or the defense ditch which is surrounding the old town. Uh, its origins, I imagine, are uh, in the late Renaissance, early Baroque era, like in the 17th century. And third, we will fill the adjacent street blocks, um, which are leading to the ditch uh, from the old town. So we will come closer, uh, a bunch closer to uh, finishing the old town, which is great. So we are starting by detailing or building this big roundabout. It's directly after the highway exit. Um, and uh, yeah, one direction is leading to the city, another direction um, to future parts of the city, and one direction to the countryside, uh, which is surrounding the city. And um, since Windeby uh, will be a very bicyclist uh, friendly city. I'm also adding the spike path underneath the roundabout. And uh, first I uh, planned on making just uh, two uh, bridges uh, over the bike path. But then I changed it later to to three, one, uh, uh, three bridges. So we have like a T crossing inside of the roundabout for the bike lanes because um, the bike lanes uh, on the sides of this main street leading into the city will be uh, one direction and uh, yeah to get a nice um, crossing free transition uh, onto uh, those uh, bike uh, lanes I decided to make uh, this T crossing uh, in the middle of the uh, roundabout island. And um, for safety reasons I'm adding uh, those light poles and I'm also adding um, like a bunch of vegetation uh, for for safety or as well yeah, for beauty and for noise reasons. For those cyclists who decide to have a little break I also added some benches and some uh, trash cans. Uh, I think <laughs> yeah, it's the most beautiful place to uh, take your break from your bike uh, ride in the middle of this roundabout. I don't know, maybe you can't see the roundabout from there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I really like this, how it turns out in the end. So after uh, adding all those uh, trees and bushes, I'm detailing um, the roundabout with all the lanes and um, it's uh, all uh, pre-set up with um, traffic manager so we have like um, diverting um, diverging oh, how is it called in English so you have to choose the right lane to get to the axis of the roundabout and um, I'm doing all the lane work uh, by using Ronnie's um, white lanes. They are great for such a detail work. Um, and uh, other parts I'm using uh, PO'd versions of those uh, white uh, lane decals, those faded lane decals, uh, to save on the prop count, because procedural objects don't save on your prop count. Uh, when you place decals, they do. And also adding some arrows to show the cars where to go. Um, yeah, I cut a huge, uh, huge junk out of um, this detail work because uh, I showed I, uh, I showed you some uh, some techniques and um, also by detailing when I detail this roundabout, I show you the basic idea on how to detail or how I detail uh, such a roundabout with its main markings um, and then I cut the rest out because it's very repetitive and we got 
other things to cover in this episode. So during a little bit of music, you will see me detailing this um, this bike street or this street with bike lanes. And also we will detail this uh, bridge here leading into the old town. Uh, I made a uh, yeah, very nice custom bridge here. And um, speaking about the bike lanes uh, on crossings like in this case uh, or in this uh, area here, um, I will use uh, the bike, uh, the not the bike lanes, the white lanes by Ronix to define where I have to place the PO uh, white lane decals over it. Uh, so we have like the bike path going on, uh, but uh, uh, with with um, markings for a crossing. So that's a technique I highly recommend to you to have uh, the best look for uh, for those uh, curved uh, paths to place a network uh, lane and then. Um, the PO decals on top of it, so you can make a very nice shape, as you can see right now on the screen. And um, yeah, I also added uh, tons of decals to detail this part of the road to make it look more natural and realistic. But guys, we are reaching now uh, the uh, mark where I leave you with some music and uh, the rest of this time lapse where you can see me detailing this little roundabout. Enjoy!
So now we are entering the second part of this episode. Uh, we saw a little glimpse of it by detailing the bridge. Um, but now we uh, are going to detail this section of the channel, which is surrounding the old town. And um, yeah, to uh, say some words to the bridge uh, you saw me building during uh, the music segment. Um, I got highly inspired uh, by a bridge um, over a channel in the Italian city of Chioggia. It's also called uh, Little Venice. Um, it's in northern Italy. And uh, there you have to cross a similar bridge to get uh, in this um, yeah, Venice-like old town with all the channels and the little islands. And I really enjoyed it there. It was very good. And um, yeah, I wanted to give a little credit on this town by uh, include some inspiration of the bridge I walked there. For example, uh, the zebra crossings, um, and not uh, zebra crossings, the zebra lines uh, there at the side of the bridge, um, so cars won't park there. And um, also those big lanterns. And um, yeah, really liked it there. And, um, I really like this bridge uh, in my uh, city here. So since uh, we are still in the heart of downtown and I want to continue the density of, of, an, of an old town or of a city center uh, moving out um, or moving away from the ditch, um, you see there on the uh, upper part of the screen this huge uh, uh, corner building. Um, this is uh, the style of buildings I'm going to use here, like um, modern buildings uh, from, or not modern buildings, like more modern buildings um, from uh, the uh, 1900s or 1800s. Um, what was I going to say? So <laughs> since this part of the city is um, very dense, I wanted to have like a little bit of a green area here and uh, I decided to build this channel park here because um, yeah, we have this uh, sort of uh, ring road around uh, the ditch uh, and um, I wanted to have like a little park area here. Uh, and uh, I really like the result of uh, the combination of the foliage and uh, the fence and also those parks. By the way, those parks, I uh, not parks, those paths I'm using are um, the coastal paths. Uh, they are quite very new on the workshop and uh, I really like them as um, yeah, some, some more uh, rural park paths as well. So um, here is another bridge over the channel. We are going to have many bridges over this channel as it is the case in Christianstadt. Uh, the city, the map is um, basing on. Um, we are not going to uh, copy uh, the road layouts from in or in the town uh, of Christianstadt because um, it's a planned city from uh, the Renaissance era and it's just got a squared old town. I wanted to have a medieval old town with narrower and windier roads so um, yeah that's the difference uh, to the real Christianstadt but I wanted to have a similar number of bridges crossing the ditch here. Um, yeah, and uh, now we already got two uh, bridges uh, and we just started to work on this ditch. Um, I also added this little green area here because I don't thought yeah, buildings would, um, would fit there very well. So I decided to place a parking lot and some bushes around it uh, so we got a nice transition here from the ditch to this road leading into the old town. And when it comes to parking lots uh, it's the second parking lot I'm adding here and I'm detailing it uh, just uh, with some basic elements like those curb networks and um, yeah later on with uh, some trees and some foliage, flowers and bushes so uh, nothing very special. It's also not a park here. It's really just a green area uh, to 
make a nice transition between the bridge and the parking lot and yeah it's like a like a big planter uh, if you want to call it like this so uh, as you can see i also wanted to uh, place uh, like some cobblestone parking spots uh, the reason for this is um, f I don't know the terra uh, the, the ter terra farming network it didn't work here uh, very well uh, it got some terrain glitches and so I couldn't use the um, the parking lot road uh, buildings uh, the parking lots here um, so I had to make this um, out of props and uh, now I am detailing this uh, yeah this large uh, sidewalk it's in fact uh, the sidewalk of the street and it uh, goes down to the channel so I'm using uh, these keys by Avania and they are very very nice for a channel like this where you got this uh, lower level um, on the water level of the ditch uh, uh, and uh, then uh, the upper level is on the level of the streets. Um, so I, I'd imagine that um, yeah, in some uh, older eras, um, boats came into this part of the town and were loaded and I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm not an expert in uh, those water uh, things, but um, I think it looks very realistic and to add some shadows I'm uh, placing those London plane trees and uh, yeah I really like them uh, I definitely will place them uh, through the whole city so now we um, start working on this school it's a uh, it's a baroque school and um, it's a gymnasium, I'd imagine. It's a high school in Germany uh, where you can make your Abitur preparing for university. And um, I thought that uh, this building uh, was sort of connected to to the Johanneum here, Johanneum Asset by Titan from, uh, from Dresden. So that's why we have this arch here and uh, so those buildings um, uh, are belonging now together um, and the huge building I don't think that uh, there is something related to the school I'd imagine it to be like a city uh, hall and conference uh, center it's comparable to uh, the so-called Stadthalle in Heidelberg uh, it's a large um, yeah, large building in the old town of Heidelberg in Germany and uh, to give uh, the uh, students of uh, this gymnasium a nice backyard uh, I added here. But guys, we are reaching the end of this episode. Make sure you leave a like and you subscribe. And also um, make sure that you uh, check out my Patreon page if you want to support me further. Uh, the usual YouTube uh, support. And... Um, I'm as well active uh, on Twitter, so uh, make sure you follow me there. And uh, at least um, you got invited to my Discord server uh, when you want to get directly in touch with me and uh, other fans of this channel and of City Skylands. Bye bye, and I wish you all the best until the next time.